So a big part of our inspection examinations for things like the C-SWIP 3.1, C-SWIP 3.0, is to do a practical inspection. That's in a couple of different ways. Here I have a, a pipe, which isn't used on the course, but it's a, it's a good example and it's fairly close to what those exams look like and those trainer samples look like. Uh, I thought we'd just go through the information you need to get onto your reports to be able to best answer your uh, questions and give you the best chance to pass your exam. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, have a, please have a look at the rest of the videos we have around. We're trying to share as much knowledge as possible. And remember to drop a like and subscribe if you like the content. So before we start going through the defect reporting, please bear in mind I'm not going to capture every defect around the circumference of this world. The whole point of this is to show you how you generally locate and report defects on a report, which is in the top left hand side of the screen here, and generally move around and, and capture it in the right way. The, any defects I miss, well, you would see them and pull them up in your report. We may talk about them as we go through, but that's not the point of this video. So remember that there's data measures. So we've got A, B, C, and D, and they also run around the inside. So I've got A, B, C, and D. In your exam, they might not line up and completely uh it's the uh, plastic molds that might be slipped out or moved around don't worry just go off the data measures which are stated for your your pipe at the time don't try and change it don't you know just just go with what you're given and you'll be all right so starting off what you'll see on the report is a series of a uh, locations along the bottom which will have excess weld metal profile and misalignment on them the idea here is that you take your weld gauge you measure your cap height you decide on your, if your profile is good or poor now anything that's got a sharp tall blend like you can see especially around this bottom edge here is poor and then your misalignment between your pipes. If you want to learn and you haven't used uh, a weld cam gauge before, you can have a look in our video above here now, and that will go through how, how to take those measurements and, and the pros and cons of using the, the cam gauge to make sure you get the most accurate measurement you can. So I'm just gonna fill in those details there. So I've got a three millimeter cap height, I've got a poor, profile and I've got no misalignment in my my pipe as it as it stands moving on then so we move to our first uh, welding defect I'm going to pull up which is here uh, this will be this this bottom one on the edge here and when I feel it it's a poor stop start but it does have an amount of underfill in, in the weld itself. So I'm gonna carry that as underfill. So what do I need to do first? Well, we put our line on where the defect starts and we take a size. So I'm gonna say that's 50 millimeters from my datum to the start of that defect. Then I measure the length of the defect and I'm saying it's eight millimeters long. And then of course I need to put the name of the defect that we're calling it. So there you go, I've got eight millimeters of underfill. Now, I move along and we can see here, we've got an arc strike. Now, because this is off of the body of the weld itself and it's in the parent material, I can do this where I just draw a box around its location, measure from my datum, which I'm saying is 80 millimeters, and just write arc strike in it. It's likely that any acceptance criteria you're using during your exam will be more on locations 
of things like arc strikes and mechanical damage. So that is enough information to be able to pull up and accept or reject. Now, as I move out of this section and I go to C, you can see there we've, we've moved into B to C and I have this very large bit of mechanical damage grinding mark, which is very, very uh, sharp in it, its body. So we're definitely gonna have to pick that up. So we'll do that again by writing our mechanical damage in a box and taking the date. And again, we said this is 80 mil millimeters away from the B datum now, because we're now we're going B to C. We also have a few defects running along the bottom here, and we can see that some of them are um, undercut along the base. So how do we do that? Well, undercut generally works on three things we need to measure, which is the type, what is the defect, its length, and is it sharp or full really? Is it deep? Uh, how deep is it? So going off what we did, we've got 70 millimeters there from the datum. Measuring it at five millimeters long, and then I'm saying it's 0 0.5 millimeters deep and sharp. Now that will just keep us, basically anything that comes up in our acceptance criteria, we'll be able to pull that out and, and, and capture it properly. If when you're doing your reports, say you don't record how deep it is, when you come to accept and reject your defect in your multi choices, if it asks for depth, you can go back and say, oh, yeah, I missed depth off. Let's let's find it and, and, and write it in and, and away we go. Well, that's how, we, that's how that one goes through and out. End of our quick show and tell about how to report your plate and pipe examinations. It's all about being accurate first time as you go through. You're not spending too much time trying to draw little pictures and, and nice little things. It's just about where does the defect start, how long does it go for, and what the defect is. With that, you'll then be able to answer any multi-choice that comes up at the next stage of the test. So I hope that was being of use and good luck in your studies.